New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles hanging out with Lil Rel. Give it up for him, Lil Rel. How we're here. Oh, yeah. uh, he's going to be at the uh, Carolines. Yeah, Carolines all weekend. Friday, oh. Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, man, go see him. Because that's, you know, um, I know you know him as the TSA agent in the documentary Get Out. <laughs> uh, but uh, his real his real first love and job is doing stand-up. Yeah, stand-up is still, um, you know, it's still the, 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 the springboard for everything. So even though I'm writing stuff, I tend to go on stage and just work it out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this can go in the show. Or this yeah. can go here. Yeah. So... Carmichael's show, I saw you doing stand-up, which right. you've been doing, what, 15, 20 years? Huh? Almost 20 years, yeah. yeah. I saw you doing that. Uh, then I saw you on the Carmichael show. Right. And then Get Out. Is yep. that the order? That's that's the order. So even before that, I did, uh, what what kind of got the Hollywood thing going was I got casted on the Living Color reboot. Ah. And then that didn't go. But then after that, I did a show called Friends of the People. I did with the Lucas Brothers and got Jermaine it. and all those guys. Okay. On True TV for two seasons. And then right after that was Carmichael's show. So at one time, Friends of the People was on and Carmichael's show was did going not on at know the same that. time. I did not know and that. And then uh, Get Out was Jordan. So funny, Jordan told me about Get Out at a party. And I was like, he's like, yeah, I wrote a horror film. I was like, oh, okay, cool, brother. Because, you know, he wasn't known for that. You know what I mean? Right, like, you right. know, writing comedy. And then he started, like, explaining to me what he did. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he gonna let you film that, brother? <laughs> <laughs> but he, al- he already wanted you to be in the film. He already he, had a part he, for you? He talked to me about it. So this is the thing about it. I didn't find out a lot of things until he started doing interviews where he was like, the whole time he was writing it, he thought about me the whole time. So I didn't even know that. But I still had to audition and yeah. everything. But I, I, it was one of those things, even when I read and I have friends going out for the same part, and these people I love, and I'm like, bro, y'all know this is mine because it sound like me. I <laughs> if I don't book this, I'm a terrible actor, man. <laughs> now, the, the, the reason I say it's a documentary is because the conversation, you know, is is had when you go off into rural country yeah. as a black person yeah. in America. People be like, hey, be careful out there. Like, I mean, that party scene alone I feel like I've experienced that a million times where you just like where you end up being the representation for everybody. Yeah. And it's asked you the dumbest questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, uh, uh, who's your favorite badge? LeBron James, right? Your friends? No, I don't know LeBron. Yeah. You know, you know, we voted for for the Obamas. <laughs> yeah, it's like all that stuff. Like it's such a crazy casting for that was even crazy. when I because I'm talking about like when I rewatch it, how like creepy all those people was. I'm like, Daniel, was you scared when you shot the scene? Because I look at a photo of him standing there, and they're all back. That's just a really creepy scene, yo. Now, the other piece of it is the reason I call it a documentary is organ harvesting. Yeah. Like, I don't know anyone that that's happened to, but you hear stories. Oh, no, it's a real thing. When we did the screening here in New York before it came out, uh, one of the film schools, one of the students stood up and just went on a tangent about that, which is why, like, She's like, no, this is really happening. How did you do that on purpose? And I think Jordan knew about it, but not like crazy. New, like, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, the brain thing is kind of, you know, that's. Yeah, we know that's not right, right, currently. Right, right, right. At least, Hopefully, I don't know. Like, we don't know if that's possible. <laughs> where you can take a brain out of one body and put it and in another body. Yeah. Like yeah, a no. full brain transplant. Yeah. I don't know. I don't but organ so. harvesting is definitely real. That's a real. Like thing. if you yeah. go, I was I went down this rabbit hole one time on Vice and I started watching all these documentaries about kidney farms. People who just you know people go there specifically to in like, India. Yes. Yeah. To take their kidneys in poor, poor little you know small towns where they have no money and that's their only way of selling their kidney is to um, wow. you this know survive wild. and then they all go in the black market and you already know. That's, That's crazy. And Lorel just got depressed. He was like, I'm like "Sorry." So I'm yeah. just <laughs> disgustingly sad. Well, and also too, <laughs> like you know, we've talked, and my family has been talked about a lot. The amount of people you know in the hood that just go missing. Yeah. And you don't know where they are. You don't know where they are. I, I mean, it happens every day. You know what I mean? When you think about it, like it, it's like still, you know, I'll say even back in the day, you used to do the cereal box thing. Mm-hmm. The hood, you never see really over the back of the milk cart, like. 
Black people just go missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the back, you remember that back in the day? <laughs> missing. So, yeah, so yeah. I never saw black kids on that. I never saw that. black, yeah. That's very, and, it's, and it's a lot. And it's still like that now. Like, Listen, we had a conversation not too long ago about all these young black and brown girls that were coming up missing. And we were like, why isn't anybody talking about this? Yeah. Over like 10 or 12 and like all in a small like uh, in the Bronx, time frame. In D.C., like in neighborhoods. I, that's so, I, it's one of those things where like where you get irritated at like what, our resources are like as far as the FBI, like all the stuff they can read. Like you can right. literally find this. I mean, what? But they don't care to do it. Right. It's, I, I it's wonder, not worth the money to them. It's very. It's, but it, I wonder why though. Like I wonder how do you get away with that? You know what I mean? Like is the families not saying anything? Which is no. I think that the families don't have enough money and can't get the community behind them enough to be like, yo. Yeah. Do something about this. Go to the representatives for the neighborhood and and have enough political and economic power to actually hold someone accountable. It's because it's crazy. It's I don't want to because you know now that we we think about like 2018, we're starting to see like the troops to so many things and mm -hmm. I'm talking about to like murders or like years later these dudes are like 90. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, even like with the Emma Till situation, like she's like, well, uh, I lied. <laughs> right? You're like, like what? Like, she's like 91, <laughs> talking about she lied, and it's like what? So it's like we're getting on, and I, I, I would hate to see what that truth is because we're waiting so long. Like if it's some one place where some guy, like we don't know, we don't know why the mess. And I it's tell in the same you, area. I tell you, she thought she was looking at me crazy a couple of weeks ago, and I've been posting on my Instagram over the last, I would say, like. Three to six months, the amount of black men that are being found dead in lakes and boating accidents mm. is... Or just suicides that make no sense. Like, I, I was telling him about a, uh, um, a young, a young man. like, damn, man, I wanted to promote Center a Center of Disease show. Control. No. Yeah. I don't mind having this. I don't mind. I don't mind having this conversation because this, this is a real. I, yeah. Like I like real conversations. So like, no, nah, it, it is. It is literally a real thing, and I. It, it, like even with the, the two young guys found basically lynched. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. And it was like, wait, what? Where is it? Uh, oh, and then we had a young boy who, who actually somebody got away. Like, uh, a young man got away recently. Like yeah, he like a away. 13, 14 yeah, year old boy, and, and they still looking for the the, the people that. that it's 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 scary, but it's it's so cowardly. That's why, like, I think, like, even what Ti was saying recently, like, you know, I'm this is not gonna keep happening. I mean, I think someday people are really gonna like, yo, let's go, let's let's go, let's there's no let's, more like talking yeah. about marches. Like, what's up? Yeah, no, I, I think I think a lot of people would love to do that now. Yeah, um, and you have those those thoughts, but you also are you know afraid, which is the plantation. Yeah which is still those chains holding on to you that's like, hey, now you might be out here by yourself and everybody going to leave you out here by yourself yeah. and then you going to be the sacrificial and everybody just going to go back to their regular jobs and you ain't, you done went and... It's a scary mindset. That's why, like, I mean, like what Kanye said was dumb, right? Because it wasn't thought out when he said this. Like, like the, yeah. But I, the route I thought he was going was that route of like right now we can break this mindset. Mm -hmm. Not talking about back because it wasn't a choice, but I'm saying right now like this mindset. Like because I think about it myself, like I, I, I'm ex I love being a strong black man. I'm like not afraid of that, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I think some people are still afraid of that. Um, you know, which is why you know you think about the civil rights movement was led by young people who didn't right. give. You know what I mean? Like they was like, you know, the parents was at home. Right. And I didn't realize that until I started researching more. And right. then you start like, looking at that video. MLK like, was twenty eight. Like yeah. Kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like kid 20s. kids. Like yeah. younger than that. Yeah. You know, so it, it's very. But I'm, I'm like I'm over that man. Like I, I'm just like I sometimes you know when we put in situations, but it's like you know you see stuff like please let me be there because I what's up. Get your hands off of her. Why are you yeah. like, like? Why are you like manhandling a woman? Like why are you throwing a woman down on the ground at a Waffle House? Because yeah. you like, I'm just sick of all of it. To be quite honest with you, and and I, I don't, I think once we able to stir energies in a different way, the results gonna change. Because right, now, like, and we can't tell everybody to. You know, black people we talk too much. Like we be like, look, we gonna do this. We gonna make like, just do it. Just shut up. We ain't gotta. We ain't got to mention our black dollars. Let's just stop yeah. spending. Yeah, fact. We ain't got to make an announcement because guess what? They ain't told us the game plan of everything they've done to us the whole time. It right. wasn't an announcement. Right. Like, okay, we're going to do slaves. 
We're going to pick you up, put you on the boat. Okay, that's our plan. Like, no, we don't know the plan. It just yeah. happens. So yeah. I think if we stop just coming together, I mean, uh, start coming together and stop being so loud about everything and just do it. Right. I think you'll see more results. Yeah, there's a lot of layers of uh, that the black community has to deal with and also the amount of things that we have to do simultaneously. Yeah. It becomes, I think, daunting where it's like we're dealing with the shit in our own homes. Mm-hmm. And unemployment. Yeah. And then the community issues. And then you're dealing with American white supremacy. Yeah. And post-traumatic slave disorder. <laughs> and gangs. And this. And while they all kind of are related, yeah. it feels like it's a long list. But that's the reality. And we got to be able to simultaneously get at these things. Which is why, like, whatever your, whatever your gift is should help whatever movement that is. So, like, if you are an actor, if you are creative, you write, you whatever, like... You create content to just to help start changing mindsets, you know, and which is why you know I, I'm you know I look at, think about all my friends that's doing well and people just are proud of like proud of like uh, Donald Glove and he like just 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 do it. That's why I love that he did that and he didn't have an interview where he explained to you what that video was. This is America. You figure it out. Right. It's what it is. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna explain it to you. And I think sometimes we over explain things to people. You know, just do it and just, you don't have to explain it. Speaking of just do it, um, now we see, and I'm sure you saw the news today um, about the NFL's new policy. Right. Where basically black men do not get on no knees. You're going to stand your black ass up. And if you don't, stay in the locker room. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the new NFL policy? You know, I don't agree with it at all. And it's so funny because I was thinking about this today because I didn't tweet anything or say anything just because, you know, I'm at Fox now. <laughs> NFL Sundays is the night of my show. And it's, it's just like, which I don't think has nothing to do with any of that. And, but at the same, it's like so weird that, that we were, like, well, I don't know why they're making this decision. I think, I don't, like, you know you're going to lose so many people that... It's it's just insane to me. It's like I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. And you know, but, but you do get the concept of not allowing black men to have that's power. That's what I'm gonna say. But it's so weird because the you think about the NBA, you think about every other sporting thing. It's not why the, what are y'all doing? And it, what what are y'all, who are you guys on these teams? Like who's Roger Goodell? Like what is this? This is crazy, right? Yeah. So I, I'm interested to see how the players really react to this because they do have a chance to really – and, I, you know, what's crazy, it's their livelihood, and I, and I get all that. But they have a second chance, okay, because that first one, Kaepernick was doing it by himself. Everybody, nobody wanted to participate and say anything. Now, what are y'all going to do now, like, with this? Are you going to stay in the locker room? Are we not going to see the end? Because somebody said this a lot too long ago. <laughs> like, nobody gets mad at Donald Trump who doesn't do all the words. He doesn't do... Didn't put his hand yeah, over so, the... I, I mean, honestly, I, you know... A quarterback, White, just came out. Sage uh, Rosenfels. I don't even know if he's in the NFL anymore. <laughs> he was like, so we're going to stop serving alcohol during the national anthem? Yeah. We're going to stop... Turn, you know, the people running the cameras, they're going to stop what they doing during yeah. the national anthem? Is every, You know, is everybody going to stop what they're doing yeah. during the national anthem <laughs> since everybody's made such a big deal out of players kneeling? Yeah. Right? right? To bring conversation around social injustice, inequalities, and police brutality. Right? You're making it so much about them, which I think what people really want to say is the only reason y'all tripping is because these are black players. I mean, look, uh, let's let's look at my man from the NBA, Sterling uh, Brown. That, that The police tased him. Milwaukee and Bucks. And the Bucks, the, the organization has his back. Yeah, they came out and was basically like, fuck the police. And that's what I'm saying. So it's like... I, they, I, I just I don't understand. I don't get what the psyche is. I don't like because you was read. I was reading it and it felt like they did. Oh, this is a great idea. So if you don't want to do that, you could just stay in the locker room and then maybe you'll get fined depending on what your team would do. <laughs> like what the heck is this? They made it worse. I think so. I think they made it worse. So it, it's um and they clearly. I think it doesn't show any sensitivity to what the players are trying to do for their communities, At which all. is the nope. biggest mistake. Yep. You have people risking their physical bodies for your entertainment and yeah. money. And all they're saying is, 
hey, in our worlds, in our communities, there is a problem that we need to bring attention to. The NFL could have quickly, years ago, been like, you know what? We need to start having conversations. We need to know what's going on. We need to help with whatever these guys' interests yeah. are. Because, let me tell you this, you just you just said something like, they ha- like the players, we've seen documentaries, we've seen movies, they haven't even exposed physically what happens to them. Nope. They've been cool. Like, all right, we'll chill. It's like, you can't even give them this? They ain't exposed what, like, what football is doing to yeah, them. Yeah, all that CTE. It's insane, yeah. and it's real. So I, I don't get the psyche of this. You know? like, I, I, sometimes it's one of those things you try to wrap your head around. Like, Listen, I still can't believe that they're that? only focusing on and calling it just disrespect to, to the flag, where they don't even want to have it's the conversation the the to it's why the players that. are actually kneeling. Exactly. Like, it, it's... it's it's almost like, look, man, if you want me to stand, you guys have seen the National Negro song. <laughs> the too. Black National Negro. Lift voice yeah. say you better be saying right after that. <laughs> and I'll stand up. <laughs> Tell Earth that heaven. <laughs> We're going to hear like five theme songs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got a chance to see the trailer for your for your show, the one yeah. with... Uh, Jess Hilarious. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, yeah, it's just uh, very proud of it. It's based off my material and uh, loosely based on my life. Uh, just a man going through divorce and him trying to pull everything together and his family and friends are helping him. And it was really fun to do. I get to do more than one character. I, I just wanted to do a sitcom that I haven't seen in a while. Like, I missed sitcoms that mm-hmm. was just, just funny. Like, right away funny. Just like, this is hysterical. And that's what I did with this. And then, like, it's, I'm thankful to Fox for giving me the opportunity to to create this funniness that I think funny that people need. But I, I also wanted to show a long-distance dad, like, that still loving relationship has mm-hmm. been a long-distance dad. We don't really see that much, um, you know, FaceTime and like, all the stuff I do now, you know. So it's almost to you want to, it's almost like a handbook, too, like, to, like, even, like, de- young dads that don't think they can, you know, participate and do things. Like, bro, you can still read them a bedtime story. Yeah. It's 2018. <laughs> FaceTime, FaceTime works. It's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's no reason you should see the kids, man. You know what I mean? If you don't want to see your kids, you just don't want to see your damn kids. Ebro, in the show, his, <laughs> the wife cheats on him with the, his barber. So now yeah, you don't really have a wife, it doesn't have a barber. Uh, it's loosely based on my life. You can tell us, man. You can't tell. I can't. No, I, some stuff is going to be true, some stuff. I, I would never tell anybody what happened or what it is. I've definitely but. heard about this. This has happened. This is a common theme where the mom <laughs> is always taking the son to the barber shop and falls in love with the barber, and That's they hilarious. end up fucking. Nah, nah, this is a common theme. This happens a lot. See, this Look, is, Ralph, this does is, it happen? Does it happen? First of all, it doesn't. No, I don't believe that. That's, that can't be a real thing. You know what I mean? Like, but that's another thing too. You get a chance to see me own my BS too. What led to that? And I think sometimes we don't see men be so scared to expose themselves. But like, yo, what did I do to push that? And I'm being very honest throughout the season up there. Like, you're gonna just see. You know, a lot of times, like, they shows like this, they'll, like, they'll make me the victim. And like, oh, you the women feel certain. No, I'm like, no, I want you to kind of be angry at me, too. Like, this is what I did. Mm. My bad. Because that's the only way you learn from your beat, your, your mess, is when you own it. Um, Chicago, where you're from, a lot of things have changed in the last yeah. decade. We only hear in mainstream media continually about the negative stuff. But I know people in Chicago that are like, yo, it's a lot of great things happening also. Yeah. Um, are you, you still live in Chicago? No, I live in L.A. now, but all my, my kids are there, families, everybody's in uh, Chicago. Uh, Chicago's such a unique place. But then at the same time, we can't act like everything ain't happening. It was at one point at Chicago, you're like, no, nah, man, it's because President Obama in office, and they wanted to focus on Chicago like it ain't violence everywhere else, which is, that is a real thing, because it is vi- literally violence everywhere, everywhere. else. But because know? Obama was there, he was like, yo, what's going on with your city? But at the same time, it did get insanely out of control. It wasn't, it wasn't even no order no more. Like, I'm not saying like gangs used to be so organized when I was growing up, but when I was a, I, like the gangs used to tell us to go into the field house. Like, yo, we about to, you know what I mean? It was just a different Interesting. thing, and I'm not defending that, but I mean, the gangs exist. It is a real There was thing. some sort of moral code. It was, a, it was a more of a code then, but then, you know, they started locking. Like, they never wanted the gangs to get organized like how the, the, the white gangs got organized mm-hmm. and became politicians and all that stuff. They didn't Speak want the on black it. gangs Speak to on it. They didn't want, they didn't, when they, like, even like, you think about like Larry Hoover's been in jail, and at one point they all was like, yo, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna jump into this. Man, they they locked all them dudes up. 
When they were starting to buy property they started, and buy started, property, yeah, yeah. just organizing it. Because, all, man, Chicago has been built on gangs, and it wasn't just black gangs. It was you know Italians, I mean? it was yes. everything. That was a thing. So you have, like, people... <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to go too deep into that. But it, it is one of those things where, like, I, you could, you see it. You see it. And it's very interesting when the black gangs try to do it that way. They shut it down. You know what I mean? Do you feel like the communities are coming out of what, you know, a few years ago when things were really out of hand? Do you feel like things are? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, because it's they like people like Chance. There's chances out there, like, really advocating just peace and just education, things we need to, to, I think, stop and slow a lot of this stuff down. But Opportunities. It's some shorties who just lost. Like, we actually, we, I think we're dealing with, like, and this is going to sound crazy maybe, but, like, the worst of the baby mama, baby daddy generation. Mm. Like, those are the teenagers now, the ones whose dad is locked up and dead or mama. This is the worst. Of Plus it. the pills, the opioids, mm. yeah. and all yeah, of that. That's, this yeah, is the, this is that group. Because... I don't know your age. I'm 43. I'm 38, yeah. We had the crack babies. Yeah. That was, you know what I'm saying? That was, my generation was the kids whose mama, they was born, their mom was doing crack, and then they had behavioral issues after that. Yeah. We come, we're, think about this, it's like the extra broken, like, because the 70s with the deadbeat dad, baby daddy, they started, dude, like, man, I'm walking out of here. Oh, you pregnant? Oh, never mind. But I'm still down the street. But they didn't they, they take care of the kids. It wasn't that, it wasn't that if bad. If you want to be with yeah, me, it ran niggas out the house. But then, you know, you fast forward to, like, you know, these teenagers, these are, like, like, think about 2000, what that what that year was, what the music was, whatever, and, like, how they were locking everybody. It was so many people being locked up before. There's so many people still in jail, and weed is legal. Like, it's just, it doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. But, like, petty stuff like that. So, like, the family is so broken. So, like, a lot of these teenagers had to, like, raise themselves, man. And, like, when you're a kid raising yourself, you just don't, you don't care. You're angry. You're just angry, yo. And I, I think... I think once we we need to just really just listen. Like we, adults tend to over talk to young people. I think just we just just shut up and listen. Like what what's up? How was your day? What, I mean, and that starts with education too. Like closing all those schools in Chicago. You know you know what makes me mad about that is that the police and everybody know what zones is what, mm -hmm. and you know if you combine this school what gang y'all know this. So you close the school over here. You you know what that is, and you put that together. You don't think nothing's gonna happen. Okay. They want something to happen. Exactly. Mass incarceration. Exactly. So it's cheap it's, labor. Uh, it's <laughs> I mean, look. Look, I don't want you to lose your new show, brother, being no, on, no, on the morning. No, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to get I'm you jumbled up in my bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I do no, this but every this day. Is, this is how I talk every single day. I'm all, I'm always having these conversations, so I don't I don't mind. I, I do at some point, um, I'm gonna tell my publicists this, but at some point. People would know my opinions on this stuff, and it is. I have a very strong opinion. You know, I, I mean, I look at so many things. I mean, like, you know, like, like even with Kanye, you know, the most annoying thing. I, not like that, but I felt like I feel bad that we. I'm looking at somebody who's mentally hurt. Like that, that dude ain't still got over his mama death, and I, I've. That's why I don't like piling on to people. I'm like, how do we? I don't even get how we get mad at people for saying stupid stuff. People say stupid stuff. Oh, I, why do it like? Oh my God! You I said do it every stupid. day. You heart broke. My heart is broken, e bro. You, what did you? Why would you say that? I can't think for the rest of my life because you were my hero that I made up in my head. You're like, come on, man. And I done said some dumb shit. Yeah, people say dumb shit all yeah. the time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why do you? Why do you? Why do you? Why is that driving you crazy? That's why I was like, when he said the stupid slay, I'm like, gosh, you do this. Why are we taking this serious? The man drove up to TMZ. <laughs> that ain't crazy to you. He just released an interview. I don't know what the like, like who at the crib? Like, where you for the go, Kanye? I said that too. I was like, like damn, I wish the Charlemagne interview was the last interview that we heard. Like, why would he run up to TMZ <laughs> to say because that? that interview was clean and nice? <laughs> it was perfect. Man. And then you ran up there and did that. I was watching it because it's a long interview. Yeah. And then the TMZ, I couldn't even get to it. Like, I guess I get whatever this is. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, you brother, but what do you do now? Why you, what what? Somebody texts him like, Kanye's on TMZ. Okay, no big deal. No, he's at TMZ. Like, what do you mean at TMZ? No, he's in the offices. No, he's not. Yes, he is. All right, well, let me finish watching this three-hour interview, and I'll look at that. But it's one of those things. Like, I lost my mom in 09, and I just know what that looks like. And I'm telling you, like, when I was watching the interview, I saw that still, too. That's why certain questions, 
you know, you could tell he didn't know how to answer. Like, it's just like, that's a hurt dude. And, you know, when you make so much money for so people, people don't even care about you healing and getting it together. I thought that when he started doing that, t- I thought he shouldn't do, 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 do the tour. I thought it was, I'm like, yo, is he okay? Well, he was, he was probably running from it. That was the only way he knew how to cope was to keep working. Sometimes, you know. I've been through it, but, you know, think about it. I wasn't me now. when I was I was doing crazy. Like, my mom passed in 09. I got to a fight at a club, broke my mm. ankle. It was all tight. But I was just a little real comedian in Chicago, so it wasn't a big deal. Only my ex-wife <laughs> saw that. It was like, man, you, I don't even, like, it's it some stuff I said to her that I didn't even remember. Because wow. you were in such a dark place of loss and it depends on how you lose your mom like you know in my situation she passed the cancer but then like she left a journal and she had uh said like you know one of the only people she could talk to is me but I, she didn't want to bother me because Oof. i'm busy Oof. and i felt terrible Oof. that i became so busy to it like that she didn't like, i thought that like so you deal with that right Oof. i'm like her, i'm like still being funny because that's how i make my money but i was just going through it and it took me having really great family and friends around me to one day where I can really just let all of it what that I need to let out with that. And I'm seeing that out of that dude, right? I'm like, you know, that's one dude I, I want to have a conversation with. It ain't going to be about his politics. I don't care about none of that. Like, yo, are you okay, man? Like, Do you know Kanye from Chicago? I've met Kanye a couple of times. So we all know the same people. So it's very, I don't know why this ain't happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, literally... Yeah. Same friends, everything. So maybe soon, but I, I would just want to just have a heart to heart with him. I, it ain't no judgment. It's just like, even with him getting lipo, and I'm like, yo, that don't look suicidal to y'all, because you know that's what his mom did. Right. You don't think he was trying to kill himself? Well, and it's also the environment, right? L.A., Calabasas, the family that he's a part of. Yeah. Plastic surgery is common, so he probably wasn't thinking it was a, you know, and I, to me, that's a big deal. To In that world, that may not be that big of a deal. Well, you obviously the access is so easy with them. Right. Ka- Kanye's the only one that's ever said anything about the right. work. <laughs> and, you know, None of them ever said anything. Them. They don't yeah. say nothing. I think they got like a special... Maybe the doctors live in the house. I don't know how they work because nobody says anything. It's just, it just happens. And we got to all act like we don't see it. Like, yeah. so Chloe did change, right? <laughs> all right well, I guess we ain't going to say nothing. Well, since you was in Get Out, you know, secondhand, you know, the sunken place. You had to save your friend in the documentary yeah. Get Out. You know what I mean? It's so many different versions of the sunken place. That's why I was. Well, Kanye about, uh, admitted that, didn't he say make fun of that? He was like, people said I was in the sunken place. Yeah. and. You know, live from the sunken place. He was tweeting from the sunken place and all of that. I'm like, bro, if you if this is a joke, that hallway looks very frightening. Do <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> so, I mean, retweeted. If this was a sarcastic joke, this does look like the sunken place, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks scary. Like, why do you? I would be so scared to be in your house. Like, yeah, bro, you want to come in? Nah, I'm gonna just sit on this porch. <laughs> it's too many doorways, hallways. Ain't no pictures up. White. Everything's white. <laughs> Who's cleaning this place constantly, man? <laughs> <laughs> Lil yeah. Rel's at Caroline's on Broadway. Um, so the Fox show starts when? Uh, this fall, September. So I'm on Sunday nights. The Simpsons, Bob Burgers, Family Guy, then Rel. Ooh, yeah, it's a man. big slot. That's dope. I'm excited. I, I just can't wait for everybody to see the show. It's really funny. So, you know, I don't know. I'm really excited. I like I'm like crazy. Like it's everything. It's just like you get the Uncle Drew thing. It's just I was just gonna ask you, Uncle Drew, on, which yeah. I was into the commercials. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now that they've expanded that, that's really Kyrie and all them in the in the yeah. uh movie as well. Yes, yeah, Kyrie, uh me, Shaq, Chris Weber, Reggie Miller, Lisa Leslie, Nate Robinson. Yo, you look like Shaq. That's who you look like. I like Shaq. Yo, y'all got the same face. Somebody put Shaq's face next to Lil Rel face. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would y'all want to do that? I mean, you, we both got fat faces. Now y'all got the same face, man. You and Shaq. Well, look, man. I I wish I had Shaq's money. Money. <laughs> Shaq. I mean, one day I said I complimented one of his cars. I'm like, oh man, that's dope. He's like, yo, you want you want to keep it for a week? I'm like, what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you took it? No, I didn't take oh, okay. it, but because I didn't want to drive around Atlanta, but it was it was just like I would like if we was in LA, I'm like, because he just he would pull up in something every day. Yeah. I just think that's so cool to be that rich. It was like, yeah, you, like, can, yeah. you can have it for a week. I'm like, all right, thank you, brother. <laughs> how was it working with all the basketball? Was it? How did y'all film this? Because I know they all have busy schedules. Well, and- we did everything in a couple months. Um, Kyrie, so <laughs> everything like from the uh, trade, rec- everything was happening while we was there. So it was kind of, I'd be in my hotel room watching sports and like, eh, 
And then the next day, I'm like, rehearsing with Kyrie, like, want to ask him, like, hey, man, uh, so you good, man? <laughs> you know I mean? like, he kind of disrespected you, bro. Right? <laughs> but, uh, he's, man, that dude is so smart, man, and uh, confident. I knew Boston was going to have this type of season because he was, he was telling me about Jay Brown and Tatum and how good they were. Like, it's just, I'm, I'm proud of Kyrie, man. He, he doesn't get enough credit for, like, instilling confidence in all those young players. Uh, but, yeah, Shaq was great. This thing, too, I'm a, such a huge basketball fan. I was pinching. I feel like I paid them to put me in this movie. Mm. And like, they, they all did my answer whatever weird basketball question I've had since I was a little kid. Like, Reggie Bill asked about him and Mike fighting. Like, why did it? Why did y'all y'all look really angry at each other? Man, man. They hated each other. He said, "Man, he kept elbowing me the whole game." I said, "Mike would elbow you." He's like, yes, he would. Mike, they say Mike played dirty. Mike, hey man, but Reggie, Reggie said he loved, but Reggie's still competitive too. That's another thing. Reggie, like, he's still knocking down. Him and Kyrie had like a three point contest a couple times. Who won? Kyrie, well, Kyrie won at David Buster's. <laughs> it was the pop a shot. It was one. It was one of those. They did that there where it was. But Kyrie, was, it was so fun to watch. I was like, "What am I? What is this? Yeah, this is crazy. You two are crazy." <laughs> and then Lisa Leslie, she's like, because you know, at one point they played real basketball. Man, she hit like six three straight. The crowd was we, we was losing it for real. Yeah, you almost forgot it was a movie, and then you forget like she like I haven't played since I retired. I'm like, what? You just hit six three wow. straight. Yeah, and they—I don't know. It was—it was. That's amazing. Yeah, that's it's gonna be a fun movie. Uncle to watch. Drew, when's that drop? June 29th. June. That's on the way. Quick. Yeah. Uh, Lil Rel, once again, he's at uh, Caroline's on Broadway all weekend. Make sure you go check him. Um, and appreciate meeting you, man. You being so open, man. That's yeah. dope, man. I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> you know, you don't. You see people in the movie. Yeah. I, you know, I was like, he's gonna be the TSA agent. That's how you act in real life. This is <laughs> this is really him. It is really him. Yeah. It's really him. It's one of those things where like I. I I feel like I thank George Peel for that, but it's like, man, it was. A, I don't think I acted in that movie. I think I was just talking like how I talk. I felt <laughs> yeah. bad, like, oh yeah, actor. Are you sure I'm doing a good job? Sure, man. <laughs> it just felt like I was doing a stand up set. Yeah, that's how like easy it felt. I didn't start acting until I did this other stuff. <laughs> well, and also since I, I meant to ask you when you was talking about basketball, uh, Chicago Bulls, yeah. Jordan. I mean, we're we're here now. Yeah. Um, is LeBron the greatest? No. No, he's not the greatest. First of all, how do people keep skipping Kobe? Don't you gotta have a LeBron Kobe debate before you get to Jordan? I've I've brought this up before, but people we skipped go so many people, man, and that's just not that's not right. Okay. Well, the 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 Kobe convo, I think, you know, LeBron's got the the stats now, the the individual stats. Yeah, he's running that. Um, but he doesn't have the rings. Kobe's got the rings. He's got five, but he doesn't have six, and he played a lot like Jordan. Who? Kobe? Kobe. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe kind of emulated himself. Kobe was a carbon himself. copy of Michael Jordan. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, this conversation is so weird. Like, I think about Shaq, for instance, right? I don't, I don't care if Shaq only dunked. You, he was unstoppable. Mm. You couldn't... That's probably the most unguardable player of all time, to be quite honest with you, with Shaq. Yeah, People right. had to lean their whole bodies Him on Shaq. Him Kareem. Kareem, that skyhook was... You what? He was hitting that from half court. But you know, it's and like, he's seven two. He was. I always think about Kareem and Shaq because people love to talk about who's the greatest sons of all time. But I'm like, man, Shaq would have wore Kareem out. He's too big. Yeah, he's too big. He would have wore him out. Yeah, footwork, getting up and down the court. Shaq played defense, offense. He was. I was gonna say, even with Elijah one, like that's why LeBron. LeBron is he's great for this era. But, We've never seen anybody this physically talented that, that's, though. That's Fast I mean. speed shot. But we got to understand that's a generational thing because Magic Johnson was a freak of nature. You think about yeah, it. He, <laughs> he's yeah. a 6'9 point guard. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just running up and down with the handles, do yeah. all this stuff. So, and he plays center in the finals. Like, yep. So I'm like, how do we... And was hitting the sky hook in the finals when Kareem went What out. are we skipping? We just skipping people? That's why yeah, that's no, we I are, hate we about are, those conversations. We are, we Mike are. is the greatest just because Mike... Because you're uh, from Chicago. Just say it. From Chicago, but we <laughs> saw Mike... Just in these different eras of things. He he got drafted at a perfect time. Well, he got a chance to go against Magic right, and Bird right, and right. all these. Like, I'm going to tell you, yo, the illest all-star, NBA all-star game to ever watch, in my opinion, 1985 NBA all-star game. Mm. Elijah Wan, uh, 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 um, Bird, Isaiah, uh, sec- first year Jordan, second year, first year Jordan. Uh, magic. Yeah. Um. They and they was playing. They playing. were playing hard, yo. No, they was playing basketball. It wasn't like the game now where it's only they was two, playing defense and offense. It's funny you say that's that's my favorite All Star game and also 
like 90, it might have been like 96. Well, no, no. The one with Iverson and Mike, and they all went back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah, year yeah. that was, that's one of my favorite All Star game uh, finishes of all time. Like, so that's what, like, I don't, I don't know. It's almost like if they're not going to play hard, man, like. Now they just see who could score the most points. Yeah, it's kind of like. Hey, what was the score this year? Like 160 to 142 or something? It was crazy. Like, we ain't saying you got to hurt each other. Just, just hoop. Play a little defense. Yeah. Yeah, that's why like the dunk contest was 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 decent, but I almost think they should start bringing out outside dunkers. Just people who just do that. Just get street somebody off the street against the NBA people. Like yeah. just one person, just give them Ain't a shot. Ain't got nothing to lose. Ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> he can't put on a show. That's all he's there for. He can't dribble. He can't shoot for real. He just got hot. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> Lil Rel, man, give it up for him. Check him. Caroline's on Broadway, Fox. The TV shows on Fox is called uh, Rel. Rail, there yeah. it is, man. Nice to meet you, man. Oh, thanks for having me, yeah. man.